Hi, this is Z. E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Neurology. Androgen deprivation therapy plays a very important part in the care of patients with uh, locally advanced metastatic prostate cancer. Joining me to discuss some of the challenges that have been presented with this COVID-19 and with telehealth and also the opportunities we have now with longer acting LHRH agonist is Dr. Tim Langford from Little Rock, Arkansas. Dr. Dan Salstein from um, San Antonio, Texas. And finally, Dr. Richard Harris from Chicago, Illinois. Richard, take it away, you're our moderator. Well, thank you, David. It's always an honor to be on these programs. So there's a whole group of patients, a subset, uh, that really do not need to be on lifetime ADT. And uh, unlike some of the just uh, uh, patients who have biologically progressed and have had all their primary therapies and are people in the uh, castrate resistance space, uh, some people that are, uh, let's say, having biological reoccurrence, getting salvage radiation and uh, change at the biochemical reoccurrence and salvage radiation and or people that are utilizing hormonal therapy um, as adjuvant therapy with certain prostatectomies. And these, of course, are going to be individuals where one is not planning on a long-term therapy, but really wants this to be a shorter course anywhere from six months to three years. So, uh, Dan, why don't you start us off by just giving us your thoughts on the utilization, perhaps, of a longer-term therapy because of this age of COVID we're in, and as we all know, this probably is going to change the whole paradigm of how we practice medicine for maybe the next couple of years, and this kind of goal to keep people out of hospitals and our office as much as possible and safely. Yeah, Richard, uh, great question. Um, you know, this is definitely a different patient population than either the metastatic hormone sensitive or metastatic cast res resistance. And med the, the main reason is it's somebody you're going to keep on ADT, but you don't plan on keeping on them, keeping that patient on at lifetime. And then I think you're correct. The, the main patient population that we see in San Antonio is that gentleman with high risk de novo prostate cancer that we're going to pair ADT with his IMRT. Um, if you're not worried about a flare, then we're usually going directly to a six-month depo formulation of an agonist and, and then injecting him every six months. And that gives us the flexibility of not having him come into the office as frequently. We can usually pair his blood draws with his injection and see him back in the office or do a telehealth visit the following week. You're not worried in, in that patient situation that he's going to have a rapid progression. You're mainly in the acute treatment phase. Similar with uh, the, the patient that has biochemical recurrence after radiation or surgery. Um, I think it's, it's much safer. You're not worried about a flare. Um, and you don't need to see that patient back in the office every three months. You can do it with a longer-acting uh, agonist depo formulation. Thanks, Dan. That was very, very good information. So uh, any, any difference in Arkansas, how we approach this? Uh, not really at all, Richard. I think we do exactly, in those, in those patient populations that Dan just mentioned, we do exactly the same thing. Uh, you know, our tendency has been to go to three-month injections. We are now doing the six-month injections, especially during COVID-19, for just that, those populations of patients. All right, terrific. And I think this is a good plug for all of us to hope that CMS uh, realizes the value of telemedicine and continues that. It's certainly something that LUGPA is going to be pushing for. Uh, these are ideal patients that you can give an injection and don't necessarily have to see them. Uh, you know, they could come in and get a PSA in a lab, and then you could just do telehealth. You're not really uh, going to have to examine them. I think that's really the limiting factor in telemedicine, of course, is being able to do exams and looking at urines. But an individual where you're just kind of following a PSA or it's a routine post-prostate cancer follow-up like radiation, or uh, or even a prostatectomy, uh, sometimes a telemedicine uh, visit uh, 
every six months may be of great benefit. So I think that coupled with this longer acting agent will give us a lot of freedom to try and have less patients visits. And as we all know, in neurology, we have a very elderly patient population for the most part. And of course, in the world of COVID, they are some of the most acceptable people of all. You know, Richard, I would echo what you said. Um, I oh, okay. hope that COVID um, triggered CMS to make uh, telehealth more user-friendly and reduce some of the restrictions. Uh, and I'm sure I'm speaking for Tim also. We, uh, where I'm located, we take care of patients in rural Texas that travel three and four hours yeah. to get to San Antonio. And it would, I can get, have these patients get their labs in their local clinic, fax them to me, and I can save an 85 year old guy a three hour drive yeah. into the office. And it's much safer, it's much better. And so I hope that this is the impetus that it takes to get us to uh, take telehealth to the next level. It would surely benefit the patient. Jim, any thoughts on that to close off? That's a great, no, that's a great point. We're in a rural state. We're in the same situation. We have satellite clinics and, and we are doing the same thing. And especially, you know, in Arkansas, another point is uh, there's a real dire shortage of urologists. And as we yep. have mature practices, we're seeing a lot of chronic patients and we're having trouble sometimes getting acute, urgent patients in. So managing this patient population uh, that way is good for the patient. Now, I think it allows us more space and time to uh, get in the urgent care patients. Great discussion, guys. Uh, the There's no question that the diamond in the rough here, uh, at least with COVID, has been to open the door for telemedicine and telehealth. Yeah. And uh, I think what we're going to find is that what we've seen is the satisfaction is pretty high with patients. Um, they like to be able, they like the situation of not, in, not having to come in. Um, and then we still have to deliver therapies and, um, and LHR agonists and antagonists are sort of a, the backbone of a lot of our prostate cancer therapies. And to integrate that, we have a uh, a blessing to have one, three, four, and six month, uh, and we tailor those uh, to uh, the patient and how uh, we're taking care of them. So thanks, guys, and uh, really appreciate it, and um, have a good rest of the day.